Hey everyone. Oh, this is a bit awkward. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay. There we go. So, hi everyone. The teaser video the other day about my ESP32 S3 boards, the production panels that came in. Well, those boards worked. They're great. So I now have Pro S3, Feather S3, and Tiny S3 production boards. Today, I'm going to actually show you the finished product. I made some changes, as I mentioned. I'm going to discuss what changes I made on them now, and then show you something that many of you have been asking about. Okay, let's go. There were some changes to the boards since I first showcased them, from minor to quite extensive. With the Tiny S3, it was just a pin reshuffle. I've broken out different pins, and of course kept them fully compatible with the Pro S3 and the Tiny Pico, so all the compatibility is still there, but you get a lot more ADC1 pins broken out than you had before, and that was really all that happened on the Tiny S3. But the Pro S3 and the Feather S3 had a bit of a feature change. The Pro S3 got a second LDO. I mentioned I wasn't putting a second LDO on any of my boards because I couldn't get any, but I got some. So the Pro S3 now has two LDOs. The stemmer connector is connected to LDO1, and LDO2 is both user settable via an I.O., but also auto shuts down in deep sleep mode. The RGB LED is connected to the second LDO, and you've got the second LDO as a pin broken out over here, which means you can power devices from the second LDO and have them automatically shut down in deep sleep. The Feather S3 also gets its second LDO back, just like I had on the Feather S2, but with some changes. What I did is added a second stemmer connector. So you've got the horizontal connector over here, that's on LDO1, and the second one is on LDO2. So you can now connect your I2C devices by the stemmer connector on either port. This one will always be on, and this one will auto shut down when it goes into deep sleep, or you can shut it down via a GPIO. Now, I didn't do that on the Pro S3 because there's no room. Look at it, it is packed in. Totally, totally packed in. <laughs> There's just no place for a second stemmer connector. Sorry, folks. So they're the changes, and they're pretty significant. They took a rejigging of all the components on the board and rerouting. It was uh, a lot of fun. Not really. <laughs> but they're done, and they're validated, and they're working great. So all the cool features of the Feather S2 are back in the Feather S3 plus more. Now, one of the questions I get a lot about my S3 boards is, what's the deep sleep current like? How low does it go in deep sleep? Well, I think it's finally time I showed you how well these do in deep sleep. Okay, here are two tiny S3s. They're identical. They're both my P4 revision, which is my final production revision. And the only difference between them is this one's got CircuitPython on it, this one's got MicroPython on it. This has my default code that when you plug it in, it does a year of two boot stuff, and then it just cycles RGB LED where this one over here has nothing on it except for some deep sleep code which you can't see anything happening. It does actually have MicroPython on it and I will show you this code running and we'll measure it on a Power Profiler Kit version 2. So let's get that ready. Okay, so here's the board as we just saw. It's running MicroPython, you can't really see it's doing anything. The first thing we're going to do is disconnect it because we're going to profile it and it's going to be via the battery. So we don't want the five volts connected. The code that's currently running is just this bit of code here. So it's importing deep sleep from machine and sleep from time. It prints an awake message, which we won't get to see. Obviously it's running off battery. There's no serial output. It'll stay awake for five seconds. Then it'll print sleeping and then it'll go to sleep for five seconds. Now this deep sleep command in MicroPython uses milliseconds. We have to pass it 5,000. It'd be really good if maybe it <laughs> had a command like that. It's a little confusing maybe compared to sleep. Sleep has a milliseconds option, but anyway. So that's the code that's currently running on it. It should cycle between being awake and asleep every five seconds. So I'm going to now connect the Power Profiler Kit 2. I'm going to connect the power out, so this V out and ground connection here. This will allow us to power the device under test. And I've just got some little clampy wires connected to those. And I need to also connect a USB connection. Now there's two connectors on here. There's the USB data and power, and then there's the USB power only. 
If we do power only, we can power the device, but we can't get any data back. So we want to plug this into, so micro B, plug it into the data power. And as you can see, it lights up green, which is kind of silly because it's not connected. <laughs> green means not connected. Weird. And then what I'm going to do is connect the, the ground first to the ground pin and the power second to the VBAT pin because it was simulating a battery. Okay, so we'll put that just there, maybe, <laughs> if it'll stay. And I'll have that a little bit on screen so you'll be able to see what that's doing activity-wise. So I'm going to open up the power profiler. Let's click open. And I need to select the device. And it's selected and now it goes red. <laughs> I would have thought other way around, whatever. So it's set to measure with a supply voltage of 4,200 millivolts, which is 4.2 volts. Now, a single cell LiPo battery has a, a nominal voltage of 3.7, a maximum voltage of 4.2, and obviously a minimum voltage of whatever, slightly under three volts. The reason I'm measuring this at 4.2 volts is because the higher the battery voltage, the higher the deep sleep current. As the battery voltage starts to drop, the deep sleep current will also drop. So this is the worst case scenario. Whatever readings we get now is the highest the deep sleep current will ever be. So what I need to do is enable the power and then start recording. As soon as I enable the power, it's gonna boot, click start, and it should be waking up, which it is. You can see it's around 30, 35 milliamps and then it drops down, it's currently in its sleep state. You can see it wake up. You can let this run through a few times. Don't really need to, but you can get to see here what it's doing. It's awake for five seconds and then it goes into sleep for five seconds and then it wakes again. So I'm gonna let it go a bit further back into the sleep and click stop. And I'm gonna turn the power off. Now what I can do is holding shift, I can click and drag and it's gonna give me an average and a max and look at that maximum of 27.71 microamps with an average of 27.29 microamps that's pretty cool so what's if we measure again and let's take it all the way down to 3.3 volts so it'll be 3300 millivolts i'm going to start that output again and start recording so it should boot we're back up to our approximate 35 milliamps and we drop down again. So this time I'll just stop it and I'll show you straight away what it is. I'm going to shift click and drag and we're down to 24.36 max with a 24.29 average. That is insane. So for those who want to know what the deep sleep current was like on the Tiny S3, you now know. Now what about the other boards? Well, they're identical. The low power circuitry on all three boards, the Tiny S3, the Pro S3, and the Feather S3 are all identical and they all measure in within a 0.1 microamp difference, exactly the same. So you can get the same results on all three of my boards. So there you go, deep sleep current. Tick. So that was some pretty sweet low current stuff, hey? Hmm. So my ESP32 S3 boards are done. I'm currently working on marketing web stuff and my printed insert cards and labels and pinout diagrams and feature diagrams and getting started guides and all the other stuff that I need to do to actually release my boards and it's not like I can really release them tomorrow anyway because well silicon anyone yeah the uh, ESP32 S3 chips that I need are in well I won't say short supply uh, I'd say no supply uh, I will have probably more stock of my Pro S3 and my Feather S3 than I will have my Tiny S3 for quite a while, unfortunately. But anyway, I'm determined to release these boards very soon. I'm putting a lot of hours into getting all this stuff finished and ready so I can actually release something. So stay tuned, it won't be long at all. But yeah, the boards are done, they're validated, they work and CircuitPython's working on them and MicroPython's working on them and they're both still early but they're fully usable and there's of course IDF and well Arduino is I think scheduled for 2.10 I don't know when that's going to be coming out 
and it's taken quite a while to get a stable S2 support in Arduino, so expect it'll take a little while to get the S3 fully stable as well. But Bluetooth is working and Wi-Fi is working and what else do you need? Yay! Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already, click the alarm bell to be notified when I've got videos coming out, especially more updates about my S3 boards. But yeah, so close, so close, so exciting. <sighs> so much hard work. Okay, bye everyone.